the anchorites of the nuclear slime. Under the ever-wise guidance of the Arch Pontifex, Glorg the Beslimed continue their expansion across the immediate sector surrounding Cradle and their new homeworld, Glorglox Fecula. The expansion has been steady and relatively successful. Multiple worlds have now been seeded with protoform, and already the Trandal slave species is spreading across these worlds, though the 77, of course, remain on Glorglox Fecula, instead communicating to their Trandal thralls through, through beams of nuclear light that are capable of accelerating beyond the speed of light. This light emitted directly from the 77's mantles themselves is a new energy, something they can use for superluminal communication, and given that they are able to sculpt protoform into the proper transceivers and translators for this light, this is how the Pulmo Malakata, specifically the anchorites of the nuclear slime, will spread their message across the galaxy. And that is their ultimate goal. The galaxy must be made aware of the glory of Arch Pontifex Glorg the Beslimed. The galaxy must bear witness to his rise to godhood so that they all might kneel and bask in his irradiating rays. All life will serve his whim sooner or later. Welcome, everybody. It's the Ash Heritor, and this is episode three of the Rise of Slug Pope. I hope you've all enjoyed the previous two episodes. And if you did, I invite you to drop a like on this one. It, uh, of course, greatly helps out with placating the dreaded YouTube algorithm, and that will also help out in ensuring that this turns into a proper series. As I mentioned in the prior episode, I will also host a giveaway with a Steam key for this game at the end of episode four. So you all stay tuned for that, and we'll see. Perhaps that's the end of the series, the mini-series, the little let's try that we have. Perhaps it will go on farther than that, but needless to say, that is where the giveaway will be. So, you know, if you want to play this game yourself, and particularly if you want to get a free copy of it, do uh, do keep a lookout for that. Otherwise, uh, if you can't wait that long and just want to get it yourself, uh, I've been linking the uh, Steam profile for it in the description of the video. It's right up at the top, so do take a look at that. Do get the game yourself if you indeed enjoy what you're seeing here, because it is a lot of fun. I can just recommend that, even though this is, uh, it was given to me. I probably would have bought it eventually anyways. Righto. Now, let's move on. Hmm. We have received a message from one of the alien civilizations, our contemporaries. A smooth-skinned biped stares back at us from the view screen, wearing some kind of lightly ceremonial garb. It jabbers a short series of unintelligible grunting sounds. Getting no response from us, it gestures at someone off-screen in a manner that which suggests annoyance. They can't seem to understand us either. What? Go away. You don't make sense. So, let's have a citizen here. Um, let's have one of our production citizens board our new colony ship. So this colony ship is coming, of course, from Glorglox Fecula, and, and it's going to uh, move out and settle another planet. The question is, which one? We have Rosalind here, which is a class 24. This is a class 22. That's only a class 17. That's less useful. I think I want to take the, the highest class planets we can get. So this this class 24, it's also distant from us. We're going to head this way, and we're going to colonize this, which is going to help expand our sphere of influence out to here, where we have another class 23. Sobek Ray, that's a cool name. <clears throat> Idle Core World. All right, Irradiance is ready for future or for further manufacturing. So we can build a supply depot, which is going to provide plus two manufacturing adjacency. But we were going to basically just turn this into a massive... Uh, like, money hub. Question is, how long does it take to do that? Colonial generator. Um, is it, it may be worth it to construct a supply depot here. 
first. Put that like it, it would if we only put it there, then it's not as good. Um, we could drop it in here, but the question is, it's only going to provide shipyard production and manufacturing. So I want it to actually be worth it. But no nowhere around here is it actually going to be worth it. How much is that going to... Or how long is that going to take us? 29? I'm hoping that's going to then be enough for our manufacturing needs. And then we can just start building financial infrastructure. It's going to take a little while. Because I don't want to... Uh, I mean, we could always destroy improvements later. Maybe that's the best option, actually. Is we, uh, we do build a supply depot, and we drop that right here. That's, that's going to be our, like, best economic stuff. Well, this is at least going to benefit one. And then we can build another manufacturing district right there. Yeah, that's a lot faster, and that's going to give us substantially more manufacturing capabilities. And then we can do a manufacturing upgrade, and then from there we can start doing, like, our economic zone. So this is going to be a little economic zone, and then everything else we're just going to turn into, like, a massive uh, money-based economy. All right, how are we looking here? Um, let's actually build some ooze tankers. So that way we can start sending them off to our, our uh, new worlds to assist. We've encountered the Terrans, this other species. Strange beings. They just look very weird. Um, very very non-slug-like, which uh, I'm not a fan of. I, I, their, their appearance is, is unsettling. They look abominable, actually. We should probably remove them uh, from the galaxy, I think. Um, let's see here. Let's start the Way to Communicate mission, because um, we need to... We need to figure out what the hell they want. I'm not so concerned about being diplomatic with anyone. But, uh... Knowing what they want is definitely going to be useful. Okay, these ships are still patrolling around the edge of our territory. This one looks weak. I could probably attack it. So let's actually send our, uh... Enforcer out to maybe go and deal with that. Our people would like to send a beacon into the universe. A message to the other starfaring races we will one day meet. What would you like this message to be? Send a message telling them to prepare for their eventual enslavement. That sounds good. Yeah. They need to know what's what. And, you know, once they hear this message, they can start, you know... They can make the mental and physical preparations, you know, they need to make sure that their bodies are very physically uh, capable so that they can work really long hours. Their minds need to become physically, uh, or their minds need to become much more resilient so that they can uh, withstand the long hours of work. So all of this is good. We're, we're being, you know, it's a benevolent act to uh, send out this information so that they can prepare. Another asteroid mining cluster. Yes, please. All right, we got some more asteroid mining going on. All right, uh, so multiple enemy ships. What the hell is this? You look like a insect. So does that, to be fair. They all look like insects. And this one frightens me a little bit. because It's actually quite capable. Um, how's our ship doing here? I don't want to engage. We're going to hold here for now. I want that, I want that little fucker to uh, come out so that we can get him. Uh, we'll send the Isengard to uh, back, back him up. Okay, there's two of these big ones. Orbital mining is done. Fantastic. So, um... Arm shuttles. We need... We need... Warships. We have ourselves an ooze tanker. Um, let's send it to... What planet do, do we need to prioritize? Um, here, I think... I think we kind of want to prioritize Slime Garden, because this is the best planet we have right now. It's even better than our capital. We're going to send all of our ships, or all of our ooze tankers, to Slime Garden, I think, because Slime Garden is going to be an awesome world. It's also in a nicely nestled away corner where uh, no one's going to bother it. It's going to be pretty good. Okay, you guys join up. 
Two chips in one go. Alright, hopefully... I don't like these being where they are. These chips are quite dangerous. I would like to pick off one of these smaller ones. But for now, I'm a little bit concerned. Also, we need a shipyard here, I realize. So let's prioritize that over the next food. Our food situation is looking a whole lot better. We can also get a uh, manufacturing upgrade. And then hopefully these manufacturing districts here will be enough. We also need more population. So let's grab a population center there and we'll get another agricultural district right here. A little bit hodgepodge, a little bit of everything everywhere, but it is what it is. Uh, ships are idle. Pull out this way. I, I don't want to engage multiple enemy fleets, but we got to do something about them. Are they coming towards us now? Most technologically advanced. We aren't on this list. We're going to ignore it and ban it. Okay. And then there's... Ah, there's an enemy shipyard out there. What kind of enemy is this, though? Like... Hmm. Dangerous. Okay. Uh, hold position. We could beam them already? No. Beaming can only work over two... Over a distance of two. So let's see if we can't pull up that way. I want to try and pick some of these off. Okay, they're coming towards me now. Armed shuttles has been completed. So now we can create... Um... Spaceships are fragile things and it's no great feat destroying them. The real art is destroying the enemy before they do it to you first. New equipment will be required uh, if we hope to come out on the right side of calculation more often. So we can get garrisons. Lasers. Cannons, hypersonic missiles, and we can do a shipyard stimulus policy. Let's choose new tech here. Uh, see if we can get space weapons. Let's get space weapons. We need to start arming. Uh, so we have ourselves an ooze fly here. So this is uh, a new warship. So I'm actually going to send it up here. Um, and then we also have a gnat, which is another type of warship. So we've got, we've got two uh, little teeny warships, which can assist us up here, but I want to try and pick this little one off first. We're going to beam it. Good. It's done a little bit of damage to it. It actually didn't do a little bit of damage to it. It did almost nothing. Can we engage? I wonder if that's going to trigger all of them to attack us at once. I hope not. I guess we're going to find out. Oh, it's dead. Okay. It just blew up. Good. Um, let's take that one out, too, while we're at it. It's another small one. We can pick off these little ones. Hopefully it'll provide... Oh, God. They're coming. They're slow, though. So that's that's good. Uh, beam it again. That's pretty cool that you can actually attack outside of uh, an immediate combat. Because we'll see here as we go into combat... Oh, it's dead. It just fled. All right. Excellent. I'm going to pull away. Jeffrey Drogor, the governor of Glorb Prime, has been false has been falsely accusing the Terrans for all the issues of their world. From crime to disease, their rhetoric has begun to galvanize the anger on the world in a way that may be beneficial in the short term, but dangerous in diplomatic relations. It has now come to a crossroads where the Terrans expect you to denounce the hate speech, but it is unlikely to turn the anger against us. But this is likely to turn the anger against us. Um, no, no, no. We absolutely uh, uh, support the hate speech against these vile, disgusting-looking creatures. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna fan the flames, get the populace all riled up against these goddamn Terrans. Oh, look at this! They've they've come, they've come, and they're colonizing planets on our borders. Yeah, this is good that we're actually researching war technology right now. Um, we are gonna want to. Asteroid factories would be really good, too. Um, both of these are going to be good. We'll do defensive studies for now. We need to be able to defend ourselves. The Elucidator is going to... Search for... What the hell is going on here? Okay, that's a nebula, apparently. Go get this anomaly. The, it's a castle. In our borders. Uh, an event here. We follow the traces of an electromagnetic anomaly to this area, only to discover it was a coded signal broadcast by an alien operating an intelligence market. Very little of the material looked like it was hostile or honestly obtained... Not that there would be many honest avenues for obtaining it, but the information looks authentic. Uh, we could buy some cheap Promethean. 
could buy a cheap Tekapod Hive. I know we need Prometheum, or we could shut the place down. Minus one Prime to all of our worlds. No, we don't need that. We're gonna we're gonna buy some cheap Prometheum. Sounds good. Sounds great, in fact. Um, because this will allow us to build Kimberly's Refuge. No, actually, we're allowed to build that because of the Monsatium deposit, which will provide plus three to population to adjacent population. Oh. Oh, build that there. No, hold on. Cancel this. Man, it's gonna suck. Yeah, we're, we're building this right here. Okay, where can we build it? Cannot be built on desert or mountains. Well, balls. Then I guess we're building it here. That's not as good, though. Shit. Maybe we need to build it on another planet. What planet has... Because there was one that had, like, really good potential population through them like this. That's not great either. Slime Garden? Slime Garden definitely could. Question is where? Like, everything's scattered around each other, so... Glorb Prime? Also not the best. We could put it here. Oh, we can't put it in desert, though. That would be, like, the perfect spot to put it, but... Alas! Okay, then it's probably just gonna go on our capital, where I was originally gonna put it. And then we're just gonna build population districts around it. So if I drop it right here in this wetland. Nine turns, then we can build a housing district right here, and a housing district there, and a housing district there, and we'll have a million population on this planet. <laughs> our capital will be uh, very densely populated. And we'll be able to get this uh, final uh, thing. Okay, so the enemies are... I'm not sure if they're pursuing us or if they're just patrolling. They seem to be uh, robotic ships. So they seem to be going on some sort of, uh, you know, just algorithm. But perhaps they've not identified us as a threat, even though we've been killing them. Perhaps they, they're not actually connected together. Though they do appear to be chasing us now, which is a little bit concerning. But we've got... Some support on the way. No, that's just an ooze tanker. That is definitely not support on the way. Our other ships are on the way too, though. So we got ourselves another ooze tanker that's going to uh, the slime garden as well. Everything to the slime garden. And we have ourselves a new planet here. We're going to call this... Um... um Molder Wall. It's on the border of our territory. So... The intense background radiation, ooh, I love it already, of Mulder Wall occasionally causes strange interference patterns in display screens around your colony, and recently these patterns have shown signs of intelligent thought. Your scientists trace the patterns to crystal outcroppings around your colony. Studying this new form of intelligence could open the door to incredible breakthroughs in the understanding of life. On the other hand, these crystals are pretty valuable looking. What are your orders? Sentient crystals, huh? Ooh, this would give us 20 harmony crystals? That'd be, that'd be a lot. Um... Yeah, absolutely. Mine them. Sell them. Look at that. That's some pretty uh, substantial resource gain right there. We only had one of them before. Okay, uh, I'm a little bit concerned. The Sacred World. Our scientists have discovered ruins on Ooze Hollow that indicate this is the world Astro Ecclesiasts describe. Holy crap, we already have it. They have asked us to construct a Kriniac Sanctuary on Ooze Hollow so that it might become the center of our religion. But the world will need a governor... And a massive or and massive resources to complete the project on such a scale. Well, we already got governor, so like that's awesome. Ooze Hallow, and it's even named like it's a hallowed world. So let's construct a Kriniac temple. Uh, how do we do that? Okay, five Durantium, three Promethean. Something to work up towards then, because uh, we're not getting that just yet. Let's uh, upgrade the manufacturing districts. And, uh, how's our fleets going? They're just gonna have to chill here for a second. Go sentry mode. Or we could move a little bit closer. Four tiles. Here, and then we could do a missile bombardment. We can't do a missile bombardment. Oh boy, they're close. Okay. Um, now we can do a missile bombardment. Excuse me? What the actual fuck? I did not click that. That was weird. Well, it looks like the Terrans don't like us. So, you'll regret this. We'll destroy them in due course. But we gotta get rid of these jerks. So we're gonna send some missiles over in this direction. Get some damage in here. 
Not sure what kind of damage that has done. Did one damage. Very, uh, very effective. But hey, you can kind of do like a hit and run thing if you can move faster. That's kind of cool. Uh, hopefully we can get those to do more damage eventually, but right now it doesn't seem like that's going to be the case. Um, so, Mulder Wall here is basically on the border of the enemy. We need to give a, uh, we need to get a, uh, hello, you're a different alien species, a Torian. Intriguing. You know, we're tired of these riffraff randals. We're going to appoint this Torian here. Maxi War. You're a peacemaker and you're defiant. Hmm. Peacemaker? I don't know if that's the best. But your diligence is very good. So we're putting you in charge of Mulder Wall. Alright, so Mulder Wall needs a lot. We got a manufacturing sector here from Volcanic Rifts. Question is, where do we want to put down our core capital? Um, we could drop it right here in the middle. Or I could drop it here on this food sector do that. So this is going to allow us to uh, exploit all of these because we got some serious potential things. The only problem is, is we don't have any good manufacturing nearby, so we're going to have to just tough it out and do it this way. We got two manufacturing sectors so that we can actually build things, and uh, yeah, I mean, we can actually rush these. It's only going to be 200 credits to rush them. We can only do one per month. Alright, fair. Well, we got one. Um, do we want to do another one? We can't do it there because that's going to be terrible. Um, we could drop it in this jungle instead. Then we can put it right here also. And get, uh... Yeah, that should be enough manufacturing to get everything going. Shouldn't take too long. Advance here. Slave finding mission success. More money. Excellent. So, with all this money, we can basically just start funding various things. We want to get a defensive matrix here. It's going to cost us Durantium. So I'm not a big fan of spending Durantium. But, uh... I don't know. Are they, are they going to come here? I don't know if they're going to come here. How are we doing here? We can, uh... Missile volley them again? Is that the same one? No, this is a different one. But hey, we're at least doing some damage. Do a kind of damage. Uh, how are our little baby ships doing? They're, they're approaching, so we need to pull away. Reconvene with the baby ships. Idle shipyard. All right, the slime garden has a shipyard. Excellent. So I think I want to construct some... Uh, we got gnats. Gnats Mark II. Well, what we can also do... Let's actually show this off. Is we can construct new fighters. So let's start a new design. And there is a thing that you can do where you can basically, you can take a pre-existing hull and then you can just m completely modify the appearance with all kinds of different stuff. E everything you could possibly want. Uh, see, there's like all of the different uh, pieces of the uh, thing and you can even like add in your own if you can download or upload 3D assets to it. So you this game, I think, has amazing modding potential when it comes to uh, being able to create custom ships. So imagine, like, you know, somewhere down the line, somebody makes a full, like, Star Wars overhaul for this. Or, a, you know, Warhammer 40k overhaul, which would be pretty awesome. So we want to take a look, because uh, we want to build a uh, little ship here. Uh, this thing's only got a movement of six. I would like this thing to move faster, so we could give it a Promethean Drive. And then, like, this is the, the sick part about it that you can just put it wherever you want on the ship. You can drop it, like, right there. Look at that. Now it's going to cost 28. It's going to cost a uh, Promethean, though. So actually, a Promethean drive, we can't afford. As much as I would like to give it one. Uh, can we delete it? We can. Perfect. Um, a boost engine, plus one moves. Only costs extra for construction. Interstellar drive costs 16 extra construction. Unshielded thruster, we don't want that. Slips, no, we don't. But that's for, for fleet movement. Now, we'll get an interstellar drive, because I want to be able to have our ships move quickly. So, unfortunately, no Promethean drive, but hey, this is going to get us somewhere. Um, and uh, let's see here. Defenses. We don't have defenses. We could get a module here. 
So we're basically just customizing a ship. Or hull support, extra hit points. Could be good. It's already got two. Could give it even more. Um, where, where could we put this? Put them, like, here, in there. And then maybe, like... These look kind of funny if I put them there. I want to give it this, like, very insect-like appearance with all these different things. Um, yeah, that, that's kind of cool. Alright, so that's a lot of hull support, and then of course we want to give it weapons. Um, particle beams do beam attack 1. Lasers are beam attack 1. Um, it's a slightly higher mass. Beam range, 1,000 kilometers. Beam cooldown, 3. Beam accuracy, 90%. These are basically the same. Except the lasers have more mass. Or we could give it missiles. Um, long range. Helios rockets are also long range. They do better attack damage. Like that. We're going to do Gauss cannons. We can just have this be like a close-in fighter. Um, what's the difference? This is just cheaper. Aside from that, it is the exact same stats. So, getting some Gauss Cannons. I mean, you can't go wrong with Gauss Cannons, right? I mean, Gauss Cannons are pretty good stuff. You could put, like, four of them on this thing. Can't put it there for some reason. Can we not? Inventory. Five out of five. Oh. Okay. Alright. Well, delete that that. Um, yeah, that, now we're at 4 out of 5, so I gotta remove the, uh, the hull upgrades. So, it's just gonna be a, uh, a gun chip, basically. Uh, we can fit three Gauss cannons onto it. So put two here. Why not? So, oh, it has five mass. Christ, okay. Uh, am I doing the wrong ship hull? This is not the right type of ship. So cancel. Cancel this design. We cannot uh, <laughs> make that into anything. Let's, let's look... Here. It's a fighter. So, theoretically, we should be able to get some sort of uh, ship available to us. These are all fighter holes. Okay. Um, can you that? Yeah, it's only got zero out of five. So, yeah, okay, so you can't put an extra engine onto it because it's so tiny is the problem, because our weapons are too big. Now, technically, we could with a particle beam. Because that's only mass 4. Then you can put the extra engine to make it move a little faster. So, perhaps that's that's the best course of action. We drop a particle beam on it. We could have it be a ventral-mounted particle beam. There we go. Um, oh, it goes forward. I don't, I don't know what's going on here. Um, rotate it. Animation. Ooh, you can, like, you can modify so much. So this is how it flies. I I'm not gonna work on ships on camera, so I'm just gonna build a uh, an existing ship, I think. I think we're just gonna build a, uh, an Ooze Fly, or a Nat. So the Nat has, uh, that's a beam ship. The Ooze Fly is a, uh, a kinetic weapon ship. We're gonna get a beam ship. We, we like lasers. We're gonna, we're gonna construct and ooze fly. We can just build them from our shipyard. That's all one. Alright, cool. Uh, so we're gonna do it like that. We're gonna build uh, a few of these. We want a swarm of them. Ready to go. We bolster our forces here, and then we can start patrolling around Molder Wall once we deal with this, uh, this stuff up here. Defensive studies is complete. So we have unlocked hull plating, advanced defenses, prototype defenses, extra shield strength, starbase defense systems, defensive measures, and extra armor plating. All right, cool. Uh, weapon systems will offer better integration of newly invented space weapons or evasive tactics. I think we want weapon systems. I'm trying to get to better ships of some kind. All right, our ships are ready to go. So our fleet is now in working order. We have a capable enough attack fleet. Gamma Fleet Alpha. Is this all of them, I hope? Yes.
Oh, man. Regardless of what we do, we're going to suffer some losses. Or we can take out the shipyard already. What's going on here? We can build a uh, Starbase defense system. That could be good. But we don't need that here. What I need, where I need that is on uh, Mulder Wall. So what I definitely want to do on, on uh, our capital, with our shipyard, is construct another slime sculptor. We can build a slime sculptor here. And right now we have ourselves another ooze tanker. The ooze tanker is actually going to start sending resources to Mulder Wall. Because we need Mulder Wall to develop really quickly so that we can... Uh, Fortify it, get, get a starbase going there so that it can start churning out ships. So we can start to apply pressure onto the Terrans. We are now at war. Terrans are in our general ship range. They've just colonized another system in our or on the edge of our territory. Though I think this is just a mining settlement. Yeah, this is just a mining uh, station. So they're taking Durantium, uh, which is a little concerning, but uh, what can you do? we got to deal with them soon. So... First contact with an alien species, these wretched, disgusting-looking human things. It is going to be violent contact. We're going to hold here for a second. I am going to shoot some missiles. Get some damage in there. We can pull in a little closer. No, we can't. I mean, we can, but... Okay, it's retreating. So it's taking a bit of damage from us. Man, that one's actually pretty big. It's a battleship? Great. Alright, so we need to really get some uh, ships online real quick. Alright, the Elucidator. What do we have here? Hello. You're a, uh, a Terran ship? A probe? Yeah, you're you're not. Goodbye. You're dead. Alright. Good stuff. So, now that we're at war, this is a good offensive ship. It's very fast, meaning it's going to be able to rapidly intercept vessels like that. I think I want to actually give it some crew quarters. Just to upgrade its health. Now it has 78 hit points. I'm going to send it over this way. There's an anomaly there that's very close to Terran territory. I'm going to go and have a look. Alright, what did we find, though? Our flagship captain reports the finding of a lost cargo container. Um, there is a propagandized module inside, capable of swaying enemy citizens' loyalty. Oh yeah, we're going to want that. We can sell it for 400. No, we want the, we want the module, because we can definitely use that. So, we could already... Um, reduce the influence growth on some of these planets. So we could drop influence growth on Sobek Ray. That's a class 23. Yeah, we want to do that. We're going to throw this on this world right here. So its influence growth is now decreasing. We could also poison it to reduce their farming. So this is going to prevent their uh, colony growth here. So, let's hope that has some effects and slows them down while we prepare for war. Ships idle. Keep pursuing, keep uh, hitting them with missiles. We want to slowly but surely... Uh, they, they're, they're healing. Yeah, that actually dealt a little bit of damage. We can take that with moderate casualties. Do it. Oh, okay, fled. Weapon systems have been completed. All right. So, yeah, I'm not sure what these do. I, I, is, this, is this just beam attack? All of our attacks go up by one? Let's see here. Tracking and targeting enemy ships pose significant challenges given the astronomical speeds and vast distances involved. Even at sublight speeds, vessels can move nearly as fast as light, often at distances spanning millions of kilometers. To overcome these difficulties, we've developed sophisticated targeting computers. Although these systems are sizable and require considerable space, they are crucial to bring the gap between near misses and successful strikes. These advanced computers enhance the accuracy of our attacks, offering a significant advantage in crucial combat scenarios. Alright, good stuff. Um, now I think we can start to uh, work on some of our uh, production infrastructure with asteroids. So, uh, we're going to come here. We're going to beam this enemy ship now. Get some more damage on it. As much damage as we can do to it prior to uh, our attack, the best. So, I want to get rid of it. Alright, we have engaged. We can watch this battle play out. So, yes, this game actually has some... Uh, you know, you don't really get to influence the battle or do anything with it. But, hey, you can, you can look at it. 
So the enemy ship here is approaching. Uh, we're about to be in combat range. We're already starting to shoot missiles from the uh, the Ezen Guard here. So that's pretty good. Our little uh, ooze flies and gnats are engaging. Uh, they may die. I mean, that one's not looking too good already. That one looked like it's about to explode, to be fair. Yep. We've lost a uh, our gnat. No, our ooze fly. All right, these ships are making a slow turnaround. Unfortunately, our uh, other one has also exploded. We're going to speed up the uh, playback here. We are getting some damage in. Hopefully, the uh, our two main ships are going to be able to uh, dish out some pain. All right, very good. That was a good, sh good shot. That was a critical hit scored by the uh, the Enforcer. The uh, Ezen Guard comes in for a near point-blank pass, and uh, its gunfire is able to take out and destroy this enemy Punisher uh, cybernetic vessel. So... One enemy ship destroyed at the meager cost of two of our own. I call that a victory. I mean, it's just... It's just the slave trandles that are, uh, you know, dying anyway, so... And more where that came from. So we're gonna immediately reinforce it with another ooze fly. Fantastic. Um, we'll get a couple more turns in. Oh, the Terran Alliance really hates us, apparently. Oh, no. What a shame. So, Mulder Wall here. How's the construction going? I actually kind of want to um, expedite some of these processes. So we need Mulder Wall going as quickly as possible. We can uh, upgrade the manufacturing district. We can get a colonial generator. Actually, I can put the colonial generator right there. So I tell you what, I'm going to remove that. We're going to put the colonial generator here. It's going to further increase our manufacturing capacities. And then we could drop a supply depot, or we could drop the supply depot there. Or we could put that here. I know this is good for research, but we're not, we don't need that right now. So, we're doing it this way. This is going to go quick, so we're going to drop both of these down first. Alright. Another ooze tanker. Head to Mulder Wall. All ooze tankers going to Mulder Wall to uh, assist in the war effort production. Meanwhile, we're continuing to skirmish up here with these uh, enemy raiding ships. Whatever they might be. Uh, let's reconvene with this ooze fly. Okay, we have this cruiser here approaching. We should be able to defeat it. No problem. Let's let's get our ships over there. We can already immediately hit it with a uh, beam attack prior to uh, engaging directly. And we can remove this thing. And I think from there we're going to attack their shipyard so that they can't produce anything further. And then it's just a matter of this battleship. Which we cannot take right now. It's too strong. So we need a, uh, a stronger, stronger ship. All right, they're unfortunately going to get away. This is very unfortunate. But let's let's engage here. So uh, I don't think we need to watch this battle. So we'll just do it as a quick battle here. We already watched it. It's basically the same type of fight. We of course predictably lost our ooze fly. Such a shame. But the enforcer has leveled up. So this is a uh, cruiser. It is a freighter. Um, so it's technically, it's not much of a warship, but, uh, could grant it a Durantium Forge to grant plus two kinetic attack to it, or we could, uh, give it an Integrity Disruptor to disrupt the armor of enemy fleets. We could give it more health. Um, I'm gonna actually give it more health. I think both of our ships here. What about the Ezen Guard? What can we do with this? So the Ezen Guard is... also got six movement. It's about average. Um... Extra crew quarters? Yeah, do it. We want these ships to be uh, tougher. Alright. Looking good. All that's left is that battleship, which uh, we can't do anything about right now. So, uh, our fleet here is going to start to move towards the... Uh, that was weird. Starbase there. And hopefully we're going to be able to... Oh god, it's chasing us. We're going to hit it, hit the Starbase with some missiles. No, we won't be able to destroy their starbase or their shipyard right now. It's got too much health, got too much attack. We need to pull back. Did a little hit and run there, but ultimately not going to cut it. So let's send our ooze flies up to uh, reinforce. Meanwhile, production continues on in our empire. Just looking here at the Terrans. It doesn't look like they're making any overt hostile actions against us, but who knows how long that's going to last. How's Mulder Wall looking? We can hasten the construction here. Let's do it. Ship's idle. Another ooze tanker. Send it to Mulder Wall. Everything to Mulder Wall. This is currently our uh, crux colony. Um, 
What do we got here? Elucidator has finished up some exploration. Drop in here to the space junk. It's right near their territory, and I don't want them to find it, so I'm going to take it first. In the meantime, we have discovered some uh, antimatter floating around. Nice. All right, that's good. It's a new resource for us that we don't have. So, our fleet here now has convened with this um, ooze fly. We need to repair our fleet. How do we do that? Does it repair on its own? I don't know. You may have to actually build, like, repair modules. And right now, this little... I say little. It's not little. It's big. It's, it's currently threatening us. We could destroy it now. But I don't know what kind of losses we're going to suffer if that happens. So I'd like to have a little bit more backup. Pull back for a second. Don't want to engage. Go sentry mode. Oh, we can repair. Do that, actually. Okay, that's how you repair your ships. Cool stuff. We have enough culture points. Let's have a look. We could get censorship. We don't need censorship, though, because we don't have factions. So we're going to go into nihilism here. Uh, alien civs will value your trades 50% more due to realism. Or we could get criminal ties. We can unlock crime wave executive order. That could be fun. What about in collectivism? What can we get here? Ooh, plus 100% homeworld influence. That's going to be pretty good. Let's get not collectivism because that's expensive. Get that. What about here? We could get censorship. But I don't have factions, so I'm going to hold off. We don't really need secret police yet, because we aren't suffering too much crime on our worlds, to my knowledge. Let's actually have a look, see if there's any worlds that are rife with crime. 3% on Slime Garden, 8% on Glorb Prime, 5% on Irradiance, 5% on Mulder Wall, 7% um, on Glorbox Fecula, and 5% uh, on Dim Wallow. Yes, 8% on Ooze Hallow. It's nothing to be overly concerned about just yet. So, we're looking pretty good. Oh, we can already queue up some more production here on Irradiance. So we have a, uh, a potent manuf manufacturing sector here. Let's get our financial districts up and running. And then we can start to uh, do some proper expansion there. Um, speaking of expansion, we of course want to rush the production here of the supply depot. It's only going to cost us 131 credits. So we got to get as much as possible going here. Um, two more supply depots. We need a shipyard. So let's queue up the shipyard. It's only going to take six turns. So we'll put that in front of our next manufacturing district. Or our manufacturing district upgrade, I should say. And then we should be good to go. How are things looking? Uh, so, survey started. Yeah, we got our survey started. Cultural points, we got 38. Ooh, five free transports would be huge. So getting cons getting to conscription, you know what? I am gonna get censorship, because I want conscription. It's gonna cost us 37. It's good stuff. Um, Where are we at here? I can't click end turn for some reason. That's concerning. What's going on? You're still repairing. You can advance. Hi, you're here. Oh, okay. It apparently it needed to do something. Hit him with a beam volley? What's, what's its health at? Can't tell. All right, 47 out of 48. I could engage. Can't tell, because I, I think me being in this asteroid field is uh, preventing them from seeing us. Or preventing us from uh, seeing their stats. Okay. Uh, we don't care. This is uh, propaganda against uh, Arch Pontifex. Uh, Lord of the Bislime, espousing the supposed glory of other civilizations. That's, uh, slander. No other civilization even understands the concept of glory, so... We now have four ships present here. They may try and attack us. Wish we could see, uh, okay, here we can see. Our missile strength is four, or is 9.5, so our missile strength is a lot stronger than our beam strength, so we should just help them with missiles. And then if they attack us this turn, we can just straight up attack them. We can't, because we moved the other ship into there, so, yeah. Ah, oh, here we go. It's, uh... You know what? Let's watch this one again. This is the big ol', uh, much larger ship. We're fighting in an asteroid belt. Holy crap, it is big. Let's speed it up once again. 
Uh, this is indeed a battleship. It dwarfs any of our ships. So we may suffer some losses here. Thankfully, our, uh, our fighters are taking heavy evasive action, managing to do some serious damage, just pelting, you know, just these little stinging attacks. Oh, no, one of our fighters took an unlucky hit, and it, uh, it has been vaporized. The unfortunate pilots have been, uh, you know, blown into uh, very small particles. Uh, they will not be remembered. Meanwhile, our two uh, capital ships were able to score some devastating uh, hits to the weak points on the drone ship, and it is dead. All right. They're out of here. So we need more ships under construction right here, right now. Uh, we got some more ooze flies in production. We're going to get even more ooze flies in production. It's always good to have a uh, healthy heaping of cannon fodder to uh, soak up damage for your more uh, capable ships. Meanwhile, we're just, you know, zipping around the borders of their territory. I'm also keeping a lookout for their scout ships or transportation ships. Basically anything that... Uh, we can have the Elucidator go and pick off, because the Elucidator is not a slouch in combat. It is tough, it hits hard, can even conduct small-scale planetary conquests. Ooh. What's the defense on this planet? Like, you're in our territory. We could attack this planet, but I don't know what the defenses of it are. We've got 174. I don't think we can attack this planet. Well, we have found a small scavenger vessel picking through a debris field. The captain claims he hasn't found anything here, but he offers us tribute if we let him go on his way. We could take three Arnor Spice and gain egalitarianism. Could do. We could have him give us some money, gain totalitarianism. I like money and totalitarianism, so we're going to have him do that. Besides, we need money to uh, hasten the production of Mulder Wall here, so now it's up to the manufacturing district. That's all we got left here, so the ooze tankers definitely did some work. Um, another manufacturing district? No, we can do a uh, an agricultural district here, although our food agriculture systems are looking pretty good, to be fair. We'd have one better here, too. Or we could get some wealth going, or we can get some extra population going. Let's actually get some extra population going right here. And, of course, we want to start building up some uh, things here. So getting a colonization center it costs us a durantium would increase growth by 15% whereas the recruiting station increases growth by 2 what is the growth on Mulder Wall actually let's give it a quick look um it's got 13% pollution that is a little bit concerning is this a growth this is just farming input I don't know how that translates to growth okay growth should be here all right Growth per month is 1.74. Uh, the regular recruiting center is way better than what we need. So we're going to build a recruiting center. It costs a whole lot less, too. Um, building a sensor array reveals even distant objects. It costs us durantium. Give the planet plus 8 sensor range. I think we need it. See if there's uh, enemies coming in. And lastly, atmospheric cleanser to deal with the pollution on this planet. Might be beneficial. It would cost us our last... Durantium. The other option is we build a defense matrix. I think I'm going to build a... I'm going to hold off. I'm going to hold off. I'm not going to build anything. All right. Our ships here are going to just repair. Because we definitely took some damage. So they're going to be busy repairing there. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Mulder Wall, can we do anything further? We've already rushed. Okay. Idle shipyard. Where do we have idle shipyards? Right here, huh? All right. Well, we could send another slime seeder. What's the population situation on... Wh where was this shipyard, actually? This in... Uh, where the, where's my capital? Here it is. No, you're already building a slime sculptor. So this must be the Dim Hallow shipyard. No, it's not. Oh, it's, uh, it's this one. Okay. The Slime Gardens shipyards. Okay, uh, what's the slime garden population situation? Three out of three. It's about to go up, though. And I could rush this for 296. Seems worthwhile, because then our population is going to go up pretty drastically, because now we have an extra population slot. Oh, it's only one? Well, surely this would give more. Hmm. Apparently not. Um, then we can build one there. And we can technically build another one there. Yeah, that's just going to be how it is. Alright, well... 
what we're going to do with our shipyard here. No, it's not that shipyard. What shipyard is Molder Wall? Oh, the, okay, right, of course. We just built that. That makes sense. That makes a whole lot of sense. Uh, we could construct some uh, ooze flies or gnats. Let's, let's build some more ooze flies. Get a little bit of a defensive fleet going on here. I would like to build something bigger, but we don't have bigger ship designs available to us yet. So we're just going to uh, construct these little ones for now. That way, when our ships arrive there, they'll have a reinforcement fleet already waiting for them. And then we can start to uh, harass Sobak Ray. Or maybe even uh, Seibo here. What have we got going on here? I don't like when it does this. Oh, there's a battle. That's what's going on. That's why. Where are we fighting? Gamma Alpha Fleet 3. What is happening? Oh, hello. No? What are we engaging? Gamma Alpha 3 Fleet battled, battled the Sentinel. I don't know what that is. This is Gamma Alpha Fleet 3. Um, yeah, I don't know why this is happening. I, I feel like uh, if the developers are watching here, um, I can't click end turn. Something usually allows me to actually end the turn after something like this happens. So hopefully that is still the case here and we don't have a uh, full game crash or a campaign uh, error that prevents me from continuing because that would be pretty bad. But I'm not sure what is doing this. No, it's it's this. It's this fleet. So you have to then click on your fleets. It would be really good if you actually, uh, if it showed the ship's idle here. Because I have to, like, move it and then it does it. That's, that's weird. So the repair function seems to bug out the end turn. All right, that's good to know that that is what's causing it. Um, so then I can just repair... Do it that way, and then it ends turn on its own. Yeah. All right. So that's that's what's causing that. Glad I figured that out. Uh, so yeah, if the developers are watching this far into this episode, which is uh, unlikely, um, but in case they are, uh, that would be uh, maybe something to uh, have a look at. But aside from that, that is where I'm going to end today's episode. Uh, it is, you know, barring that little bug. Uh, aside from that, it's been very stable. Uh, it's been very stable. It's a very fun game. I, I like the Galactic Civilization series. Uh, I enjoyed the uh, Galactic Civilizations 2 and 3 back in the day. And uh, I'm enjoying this one too. So uh, I like the pacing of it, especially when you set it to slow. It's a nice methodical, gradual build-up. Um, it's cool to see the universe slowly... Surrender to the will of, uh, you know, radioactive slug pope. It's all, it's all good stuff. So, drop this video a like if you have enjoyed it. And uh, don't forget to uh, leave any sort of comments for anything you want to see. Uh, I recorded this immediately after recording the previous episode due to my uh, vacation situation. So, if you left comments on the previous one telling me to do something and I haven't done it in this episode, that's why. Because I haven't read them yet. Because uh, this episode's being recorded before that one is even processed or released. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, stay tuned for the next one. Again, there will be at least two more episodes. Uh, and then from there, I will decide based off of the uh, turnout for the first four as to whether this continues into a full-fledged series. Righto, everyone. I'll catch you in the next one. Ash Herder out.